of personal identity by joseph butler this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org whether we are to live in the future state as it is the most important question which can possibly be asked so it is the most intelligible one which can be expressed in language yet strange perplexities have been raised about the meaning of that identity or sameness of person which is implied in the notion of our living now and hereafter or in any two successive moments and the solution of these difficulties hath been stranger than the difficulties themselves for personal identity has been explained so by some as to render the inquiry concerning a future life of no consequence at all to us the persons who are making it and though few men can be misled by such subtleties yet it may be proper a little to consider them now when it is asked wherein personal identity consists the answer should be the same as if it were asked wherein consists similitude or equality that all attempts to define would but perplex it yet there is no difficulty at all in ascertaining the idea for as upon two triangles being compared or viewed together there arises to the mind the idea of similitude or upon twice two and four the idea of equality so likewise upon comparing the consciousness of one's self or one's own existence in any two moments there as immediately arises to the mind the idea of personal identity and as the two former comparisons not only give us the idea of similitude and equality but also show us that two triangles are alike and twice two and four are equal so the latter comparison not only gives us the idea of personal identity but also shows us the identity of ourselves in those two moments the present suppose and that immediately past or the present and that a month a year or twenty years past or in other words by reflecting upon that which is myself now and that which was myself twenty years ago i discern they are not two but one and the same self but though consciousness of what is past does thus ascertain our personal identity to ourselves yet to say that it makes personal identity or is necessary to our being the same persons is to say that a person has not existed a single moment nor done one action but what he can remember indeed none but what he reflects upon and one should really think it self-evident that consciousness or personal identity presupposes and therefore cannot constitute personal identity any more than knowledge in any other case can constitute truth which it presupposes this wonderful mistake may possibly have arisen from hence that to be endued with consciousness is inseparable from the idea of a person or intelligent being for this might be expressed inaccurately thus that consciousness makes personality and from hence it might be concluded to make personal identity but though present consciousness of what we at present do and feel is necessary to our being the persons we now are yet present consciousness of past actions or feelings is not necessary to our being the same persons who performed those actions or had those feelings the inquiry what makes vegetables the same in the common acceptation of the word does not appear to have any relation to this of personal identity because the word same when applied to them and to person is not only applied to different subjects but is also used in different senses for when a man swears to the same tree as having stood fifty years in the same place he means only the same as to all the purposes of property and uses of common life and not that the tree has been all that time the same in the strict philosophical sense of the word for he does not know whether any one particle of the present tree be the same with any one particle of the tree which stood in the same place fifty years ago and if they have not one common particle of matter they cannot be the same tree in the proper philosophical sense of the word same 
it being evidently a contradiction in terms to say they are when no part of their substance and no one of their properties is the same no part of their substance by the supposition no one of their properties because it is allowed that the same property cannot be transferred from one substance to another and therefore when we say the identity or sameness of a plant consists in a continuation of the same life communicated under the same organization to a number of particles of matter whether the same or not the word same when applied to life and to organization cannot possibly be understood to signify what it signifies in this very sentence when applied to matter in a loose and popular sense then the life and the organization of the plant are justly said to be the same notwithstanding the perpetual change of the parts but in a strict and philosophical sense of speech no man no being no mode of being no anything can be the same with that with which it has indeed nothing the same now sameness is used in this latter sense when applied to persons the identity of these therefore cannot subsist with diversity of substance the thing here considered and demonstratively as i think determined is proposed by mr locke in these words whether it namely the same self or person be the same identical substance and he has suggested what is a much better answer to the question than that which he gives it in form he defines person a thinking intelligent being etc and personal identity the sameness of a rational being the question then is whether the same rational being is the same substance which needs no answer because being and substance in this place stand for the same idea the ground of the doubt whether the same person be the same substance is said to be this that the consciousness of our own existence in youth and in old age or in any two joint successive moments is not the same individual action namely not the same consciousness but different successive consciousnesses now it is strange that this should have occasioned such perplexities for it is surely conceivable that a person may have a capacity of knowing some object or other to be same now which it was when he contemplated it formerly yet in this case whereby the supposition the object is perceived to be the same the perception of it in any two moments cannot be one and the same perception and thus though the successive consciousnesses which we have of our own existence are not the same yet are they consciousnesses of one and the same thing or object of the same person self or living agent the person of whose existence the consciousness is felt now and was felt an hour or a year ago is discerned to be not two persons but one and the same person and therefore is one and the same mr locke's observation upon this subject appear hasty and he seems to profess himself dissatisfied with suppositions which he has made relating to it but some of those hasty observations have been carried to a strange length by others whose notion when traced and examined to the bottom amounts i think to this that personality is not a permanent but a transient thing that it lives and dies begins and ends continually that no one can any more remain one and the same person two moments together then two successive moments can be one and the same moment that our substance is indeed continually changing but whether this be so or not is it seems nothing to the purpose since it is not substance but consciousness alone which constitutes personality which consciousness being successive cannot be the same in any two moments nor consequently the personality constituted by it and from hence it must follow that it is a fallacy upon ourselves to charge our present selves with anything we did or to imagine our present selves interested in anything which befell us yesterday 
or that our present self will be interested in what will befall us tomorrow since our present self if not in reality the same with the self of yesterday but another like self or person coming in its room and mistaken for it to which another self will succeed tomorrow this i say must follow for if the self or person of today and that of tomorrow are not the same but only like persons the person of today is really no more interested in what will befall the person of tomorrow than in what will befall any other person it may be thought perhaps that this is not a just representation of the opinion we are speaking of because those who maintain it allow that a person is the same as far back as his remembrance reaches and indeed they do use the words identity and same person nor will language permit these words to be laid aside since if they were there must be i know not what ridiculous paraphrases substituted in the room of them but they cannot consistently with themselves mean that the person is really the same for it is self-evident that the personality cannot be really the same if as they expressly assert that in which it consists is not the same and as consistently with themselves they cannot so i think it appears they do not mean that the person is really the same but only that he is so in a fictitious sense in such a sense only as they assert for this they do assert that any number of persons whatever may be the same person the bare unfolding this notion and laying it thus naked and open seems the best confutation of it however since great stress is said to be put upon it i add the following things first this notion is absolutely contradictory to that certain conviction when necessarily and every moment rises within it when we turn our thoughts upon ourselves when we reflect upon what is past and look forward upon what is to come all imagination of a daily change of that living agent which each man calls himself for another or of any such change throughout our whole present life is entirely borne down by our natural sense of things nor is it possible for a person in his wits to alter his conduct with regard to his health or affairs from a suspicion that though he should live to-morrow he should not however be the same person he is to-day and yet if it be reasonable to act with respect to a future life upon this notion that personality is transient it is reasonable to act upon it with respect to the present here then is a notion equally applicable to religion and to our temporal concerns and every one sees and feels the inexpressible absurdity of it in the latter case if therefore any can take up with it in the former this cannot proceed from reason of the thing but must be owning to an inward unfairness and secret corruption of heart secondly it is not an idea or abstract notion or quality but a being only which is capable of life and action of happiness and misery now all beings confessedly continue the same during the whole time of their existence consider then a living being now existing and which has existed for any time alive this living being must have done and suffered and enjoyed what it has done and suffered and enjoyed formerly this living being i say and not another as really as it does and suffers and enjoys what it does and suffers and enjoys this instant all these successive actions enjoyments and sufferings are actions enjoyments and sufferings of the same living being and they are so prior to all consideration of its remembering or forgetting since remembering or forgetting can make no alteration in the truth of past matter of fact and suppose this being endued with limited powers of knowledge and memory there is no more difficulty in conceiving it to have a power of knowing itself to be the same living being which it was some time ago of remembering some of its actions sufferings and enjoyments and forgetting others than in conceiving it to know or remember or forget anything else thirdly 
every person is conscious that he is now the same person or self he was as far back as his remembrance reaches since when any one reflects upon a past action of his own he is just as certain of the person who did that action namely himself the person who now reflects upon it as he is certain that the action was at all done nay very often a person's assurance of an action having been done of which he is absolutely assured arises wholly from the consciousness that he himself did it and this he person or self must either be a substance or the property of some substance if he if person be a substance then consciousness that he is the same person is consciousness that he is the same substance if the person or he be the property of a substance still consciousness that he is the same property is as certain a proof that his substance remains the same as consciousness that he remains the same substance would be since the same property cannot be transferred from one substance to another but though we are thus certain that we are the same agents living beings or substances now which we were as far back as our remembrance reaches yet it is asked whether we may not possibly be deceived in it and this question may be asked at the end of any demonstration whatever because it is a question concerning the truth of perception by memory and he who can doubt whether perception by memory can in this case be depended upon may doubt also whether perception by deduction and reasoning which also include memory or indeed whether intuitive perception can hence then we go no further for it is ridiculous to attempt to prove the truth of those perceptions whose truth we can no otherwise prove than by other perceptions of exactly the same kind with them and which there is just the same grounds to suspect or to attempt to prove the truth of our faculties which can no otherwise be proved than by the use or means of those very suspected faculties themselves end of of personal identity by joseph butler sixteen ninety two to seventeen fifty two